Module 19. Subroutines. A subroutine is a separate section of code that is given its own name or identifier. This code can then be called from other parts of the code and all the code within the subroutine will run. You might have a piece of code that you will need to run many times, for example, outputting a specific animation and sound sequence. Instead of writing the code for it every time you need it, you could put that code into a subroutine, then just call it when you need it. The fewer times you have to rewrite the same code, the more time you save, and the less likely you are to make an error. There are two types of subroutine, a procedure and a function. A procedure just runs the code inside it. It doesn't return any values to the code that called it. A function also runs the code, but a function sends something back to the program, a value, for example, a number or a string or a Boolean value. Many languages have different syntax for these, but Python does both of them in one, so you can return a value or not. Either way will not cause a problem. A procedure just runs the code inside. Procedure declarations go at the top of your code, under where you import your libraries. You declare a procedure with the word def, then an identifier. On line three, here it's image procedure. Then you open and close brackets. You'll learn what can go in these later, followed by a colon. All the code you want in the procedure is indented beneath. So in this example, lines four to eight are part of image procedure. The main program starts below all the procedure without any indentation. The main program here starts on line 10. This is where the micro bit will start running the code. So it will read line 10 first, then 11. Line 11 says to go to image procedure. At this point, it will jump to line three and run down to line eight. When line eight finishes, the code will go back to 11 and it's in a loop. So it will check the loop on line 10, then run 11 again which sends it back to line three, etc. This will display the animation continuously. Here's an example with two procedures. The main program will start on line 17. Line 18 tells it to go to first animation, which is line three to eight. The program then returns to line 18. It moves to line 19, which says go to second animation, which is lines 10 to 15. This returns to line 19 and then loops back to 17. Notice how the same identifiers are used. When you declare a variable within a procedure, it only exists in that procedure, not elsewhere. This is called a local variable. It's local to that subroutine. So as soon as first animation is finished, the variables image one, image two, etc., all disappear. They cannot be accessed elsewhere. We'll look at how to access these elsewhere later with parameters and global variables. A function returns a value. This means the function must do something or check something that then returns something to be used in the program. For example, it might perform a calculation and return the result. It might check if a button has been pressed and return this. It might track what gestures have been performed over 20 seconds and return these as a string of data. The structure is the same. It just uses the return command word and then the value or identifier of where the value is stored. When the value is returned, you will probably need to do something with it. It could be outputting it or storing it in a variable. Here are some examples. In this example, the program starts on line six. It will output whatever is returned by function one. Function one starts on line three. Line four says it returns the number 10. So the number 10 will replace the function one call and 10 will be output. In this example, line seven will run first. This calls the function calculate, so it goes to line three. Line four stores 30 in the variable value. Line five then returns value, so the number 30 is being returned. The number 30 now replaces the function called calculate on line seven. So answer now stores the number 30. Line eight then outputs this number. In this example, the program starts on line 27. Line 29 calls the function calculate on line three. This function checks and returns the letter of the button that has been clicked the most times. 
The program then goes back to line 29. The letter replaces calculate on the function call and is compare to the letter A. If it is true, then procedure A, then B run. If it's false, then B, then A run. A second way of accessing values within a subroutine is through the use of global variables. Remember that a local variable is declared inside a subroutine and only exists while the subroutine is executing. There are also global variables. These are declared at the top of your program and then these can be accessed by the main program and every subroutine. This is great because they're really easy to use and manipulate. You don't need to use parameters, etc. But they waste memory. If you have a large program with thousands of variables and declare them all as global, then all that memory is taken up the entire time the program is running. On small programs, it's OK, but it's better to get into the practice of not using them now and use parameters instead. But let's show you how they are used, in case you get stuck and need them. In this example, we have used parameters num1 and num2. The values 10 and 3 are sent in the function call on line 8. Here is the same program with global variables. On line 2 and 3, the two variables are defined as being global. They are not identified at all and are at the top of the program before any subroutines. They are then used in the main program on line 8 and 9 and also in the function when they are referred to on line 5. They were not sent as parameters but can still be accessed. The other benefit of parameters is that they allow you to take a subroutine out of a program and use it elsewhere. You can copy the function, paste it into another program, and all you need to do is send it the values it needs. If you use a global variable, then you would need to introduce this into the new program and then change the values in the main program before you can use the function. So they do exist. They can be useful. But use parameters whenever you can.